Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome back to the Eastern Wing. Well, I just got done watching Big B's video, and he's got it. He's got it right now. He understands exactly right. I'm going to go into a little more theoretical thinking here. In a manner of speaking... Axial loads created by the propeller spinning <clears throat> are bad for moving parts. You want to get those axial loads away from the moving parts as soon as possible because the moving parts not only have to rotate and handle rotational loads by putting the thrust loads through them, they're now dealing with these axial loads as well. So the less loads you put on the moving parts, the better. Think of it in that manner. So the sooner you can get those loads off the system, the better. Now, let's take a look at this one right here. This one right here. If you look, there's a ball bearing right at the end of the strut, and there's no play whatsoever. That is the one advantage I have found with these stingers that have the square drive in them, that the square drive takes up any shrinkage of the flex lot or the flex cable. And so the prop shaft that rotates in these stingers has no thrust loads on it or the, the cable in, in the stinger has no thrust loads on it. They all immediately go from the propeller, boom, to some fixed part of the boat. You know, so it goes essentially from the propeller to the hull. Anything bolted to the hull is for actual, actual purposes, the hull. So... That's the most efficient way to transfer power. When you think about it, you go directly from the propeller to the hull. You forget all those rotating parts inside. The next best way, and this is where Big B finally got it, I couldn't see the front of the TP motor. Now, I know his end of bell has the bearing installed from inside. So the bearing is pressed in from the inside. That's good for axial loads going that way. But I couldn't see which way his front bearing was, his back bearing actually. Was it like this, where the bearing was pressed in from the outside, or was it pressed in from the inside like his end bell? I couldn't see that, and I couldn't see where his Teflon washers were riding. So they were riding in one of three possible places. One, they were riding on the face of the uh, motor, which is where you want those loads to go, by the way. You want the loads to be transferred to the face of this motor and not this shaft. So if the loads are transferred to the face of the motor, that's essentially the hull. It's fixed. So by loading this, you're pushing the hull forward. Stand by. Most of my setups are so small and lightweight, and in fact, most of Big B's are as well, that... You can get away with the motor bearings carrying the thrust loads. They're fine. They'll carry some, you know, but they won't carry a lot. No, 
because this was in fact a gearbox and I didn't have the uh, uh, appropriate thrust, th thrust, thrust rated bearings, I put a ball bearing in here. Now look what I did. I've got a gap in the shaft. This is a 0 0.150 shaft, so that's about 0 0.075. And there's a little bit of, you know, movement throughout the whole thing. But the bearing presses up against the outer support of the shaft. Imagine this were the rotor or the, the stator of your motor and the rotating part was the rotor. I mean, it'd be the same thing. You want the loads transferred from this coupler directly to the fixed part of the boat as soon as you can get it away from the moving parts. So the sooner the better, either back here or right there. You know, those are the two closest places. Further on down the line, it just gets harder and harder and heavier and heavier and, and worse and worse and worse. So there you go. That's thinking about axial loading. You know, let, let's be real honest. The stuff we run and the quality of the bearings we have, you know, 99% of the time, everything will be just fine. But <laughs> Big B operates in that 1%. And so as a result, he's right at the edge. And when you think about it, what let go first was that brass spacer. And so just the basic design, sorry about that, just the basic design of the TP motor with that piece of brass there. I mean, that piece of brass was handling a 14 pound boat going 100 miles an hour. Now that's probably 140 pounds, 10 times the weight of the boat, you know, going through there and a little brass sleeve, you know, it, it didn't look very big. It didn't look very meaty. Now, if it was a big, meaty stainless steel thing, oh, I might have had better luck. But I don't think the engineers at TP were planning on thrust loads going through that piece of brass. That's why it exploded <laughs> into a billion pieces. Anyway... It's a good learning experience for all of us, you know, to see just what can happen. And, you know, as for Big B's motor, the rotor's probably toast, but I don't know about the stator. He might be able to get a new rotor and rebuild that motor. Nah, I guess not. He's got other newer motors. <laughs> Until next time, boys and girls, jet out. Welcome back, boys and girls. I searched and I searched and I searched and I dug around and in my pile of stuff, I found, ah, there they are, my pointing tweezers. No, I found a boat that I built a long, long time ago that uses a ball thrust bearing. And here's what I've got. This is my old limited spec hydro. And it originally ran with a speed 700 motor and 12 round cells. NICADs or later uh, nickel metal hydrides. And then they changed the class rules to allow either the AquaCraft uh, motor or the uh, SV27 motor. There, I guess that was the AquaCraft motor. There was another motor, production motor they would allow. But those were basically 36, uh, 3650s. They were a, 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 a Speed 500 can. Well, Steve knew 
built motors out of a Speed 500 can so his motors could run in P-Spec P, P Limited. So, uh, <laughs> there's, so I, I ran this motor and it was, it was a good motor. It went like stink, but here's the deal. Take a look at this. This is what I want you to see. I'm going to zoom you in. Boom. Can you see? Jose, can, Jose, can you see? You see the coupler right here. And then in front of the coupler is this ball bearing. And then in front of the ball bearing is this big aluminum washer. And that big aluminum washer pushes on the motor because this ball bearing in here, I'm going to zoom you out again, because this ball bearing, thrust bearing, this ball thrust bearing is too small and it rode on the the bearing on the end bell. So this was one of the early creations where I wanted to get rid of those thrust loads and put them into something fixed and non-rotating as soon as I could. So I've got the propeller shaft. This is a 16th wire drive. And the coupler just presses up against the motor. And you can see there's no play. And it's just kind of finger tight snug against the motor. And there's a little bit of gaposis here. Because <coughs> even a wire drive drive will shorten a little bit not nearly as much as the gaposis i have though so anyway this is at the bottom of my pile of boats and as i'm looking at it <laughs> i'm thinking it's seaworthy I, do, I don't see anything that's not in place i gotta plug the motor wires in but I refitted this for uh, for new batteries, and then it it went down to the bottom of the 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 pile. <laughs> it went to the bottom of the pile for a while, and it did it with style. Okay, boys and girls, jet out.